Let's move on to methane now in terms of uh, sources and mitigation measures and co-benefits and so on. Um, so the uh, US uh, uh, methane emissions uh, and the global methane emissions increased and a gas boom uh, actually uh, increased the uh, accelerated the methane emissions in 2019 but it has this flattening uh, here which I think is not completely explained uh, but we, anyways there is generally an increase and if you go back to the beginning of the industrial revolution uh, it has gone from around I think 400 parts per billion so only thing you have to remember this this is again parts per billion and not parts per million like CO2 so part of the total uh, increase in emissions um, going back to our favorite site CCAC uh, the residence time of methane in the atmosphere is around 12 years methane is a powerful greenhouse gas with global warming potential of 26 compared to CO2 uh, methane emissions caused by human activities are one of the most significant drivers of climate change. We already know that. Methane is also the me main precursor to tropos tropospheric ozone. So ozone is not ever directly emitted by our activities, but it is formed from these uh, precursors like methane and NOx and so on. So the major sources are from 2005 for various continents here uh, are shown, various regions in terms of fossil fuel, uh, livestock enteric fermentation, livestock, livestock manure, rice cultivation and other agricultural sources, waste treatment and waste water treatment. Uh, so there are natural sources. So this is 310 million tons of global methane emission in um, 2005 from just human sources, not natural sources. Um, so globally increased methane emissions are responsible for half of the observed rise in ozone levels. Ozone is a very serious greenhouse gas as well as a hazardous gas for health, a serious hazard for health. In the stratosphere is good, it's blocking UV and protecting us, but in the troposphere it's not good. While methane does not cause direct harm to human health or crop production, its role as precursor gas contributors uh, contributes greatly to the health uh, and agricultural impacts of ozone. Okay, so here are the uh, percentage contributions from various sources in 2010 for global annual methane emissions in the range of 558 million to 736 million metric tons uh, per year from 2003 to 2012 uh, that decade. So enteric fermentation, that's a huge, huge source, the largest source here. Oil and gas extraction, as we saw already, landfills, rice cultivation, waste wa waste water treatment, agricultural emissions like uh, rice paddies, agriculture, uh, manure, biomass, coal mining, and so on. And the detection of methane requires special tools. Uh, when you just look at it, you don't see by naked eye. Uh, emission of methane or the leak from these tanks and pipelines and so on but with the aid of an infrared camera you can clearly see that methane is pouring out of this tank here profusely coming out okay so reducing leak itself is argued repeatedly to be uh, a very good way to reduce significant amounts of methane emissions and just to mention again, flaring is better because then methane, which has a global warming potential of 26, is reduced to CO2 and water, which are still greenhouse gases. Um, the uh, enteric fermentation, cattle have, ruminators in general, have this amazing uh, structure of the stomach where it's rumen, abomasum, and reticulum. So they keep eating all day and they just store it and then they chew it. Before they uh, chew it, they ferment it, which produces methane. So it's a kind of a very thermodynamically inefficient evolution. 
Nonetheless, uh, the Yale School of the Environment, for example, reports now what is been a research uh, finding that there are certain diets which can greatly reduce this methane emission from uh, the cattle uh, digestive system. Um, so seaweed apparently can uh, reduce the cows belching methane significantly and seaweed also has uh, other benefits like uh, increasing oxygen uh, in the waters, providing habitats, uh, and also sequestering carbon, uh, uh, sometimes more than uh, forests uh, on land. Okay, The Oil and Gas Climate Initiative is an effort by the uh, producers of oil and gas uh, who have made great plans to reduce uh, methane by 20% by 2025 which is, uh, so here it is, ambition in detail, 2017, how we reduce methane. So there are the approaches uh, and these are the percentages uh, in terms of uh, emissions uh, or part of the uh, emission and they will reduce it to 20% uh, or bring it to near zero after 2025. And there is already debate that this is not enough and they can do much more, obviously. That's always a debate. Who can do more than they are willing to do? Uh, so there is that uh, issue of whether uh, the co-benefits uh, for everybody else means just a cost for the oil and gas producers or they also have some co-benefits. Just the goodwill of the people, they want to be seen now as environmentally friendly. They put out a lot of commercials saying how they are improving uh, their em uh, methane emissions, flaring, uh, and how they are also researching on bioenergy, alternative fuels, uh, funding solar, uh, and most importantly, they highlight their investment in carbon capture and sequestration a lot. That seems to be their go-to solution and obviously a lot of the uh, scientists and organizations uh, see that as um, overselling carbon capture and sequestration because right now there is no scalable um, method to remove large amounts of uh, carbon from the system. Okay.